What's going on everyone? Welcome to our third vlog here at World of Reef. Um, this week on the vlog, we've got a lot of different stuff, kind of a, a jack of all trades. Uh, we're gonna talk about the nitrogen cycle like we said. Uh, I did some fragging, some treatment for some fish, um, and a couple other things just kind of randomly thrown in there. So uh, stay tuned. So I was just in the back, like kind of cleaning up, organizing, because we get a bunch of orders, boxes, cardboard, trash. There's just, like it's a mess a lot back here. Um, so a lot of the time I just, when I get bored, I just start organizing back here. But I just wanted to show you kind of a before and after because I'm kind of rearranging how it is back here. Because we have a bunch of our tanks and our skimmers in the back and like if someone asks for them, they'll be like, oh yeah, we got it in the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it up closer to the front. So yeah, as you can see, all of our tanks are right here. There's a sump right there. We have skimmers over there. But I'm gonna move them all to over here right next to the doorway back into the shop. That way, when people come, they don't have to walk through the entire back and the mess that's all back here. Like, it'll be right there, easy access, and it'll feel more as if it's in the store rather than just kind of in, like, the warehouse area. So I'm going to do kind of a before and after. Um, you'll see it. Before. After. Before. after so i finally finished organizing back here this video is actually like several days later because you know customers come in i was trying to learn the website stuff um you know i can't really move stuff by myself so i finally finished and i just want to give you guys a quick tour of what we're looking at so as you can see this pallet right here is completely gone from the back nice big open area so that way we can set up our second system for the coral farm you see we already have our two bins ready to go and then now when you come over straight through the door from our main display room we have our tanks protein skimmers and our sump all right here that way when you want to you know buy a tank from us you don't have to weave your way through our entire coral farm it's just right there by the door so it's a lot simpler for you guys and easier access so you know, I'm not the best technical with websites, uh, so I'm slowly learning how to update our website better um, so we can be more active in it. Because at first we had someone else doing our website, and it's really hard to update because we're constantly going through fish and corals. So we want to be able to do it in store now. Uh, so Randy, who's really good with websites, he's kind of just walking me through the process right now. Um, so we're trying to make the best website possible for you guys, and the more people that know what they're doing on the website is just going to help us a lot more. Almost there. Uh, everything in consecutive order, you know, from 50,148 all the way to 50,153 has a, uh, a description, a name, and also it's got the price as well. So you click on it, boom, you have a photo, dashboard. Most of this stuff, they're not going to use. It doesn't really pertain to what we are doing. Okay. You are going to be using catalog. So catalog and then manage products. It's a left tab that has all this information. My general has this entire window of info. If I click on prices. So again, that was just like a brief little, you know, snippet of, you know, working on the website. Cause you know, I do want to get better. I spent a lot of time these past couple days really, you know, working on the website. Cause Randy, Randy, uh, he's left now um, to go, you know, take care of his new son who's due very soon. Um, he's got some stuff around the house he's got to handle. Um, so, he taught me a lot and I, I've learned a lot recently. So these past two days, like I've put a lot of work into the website. So I definitely recommend checking it out. There's still some kinks I got to work out, stuff I got to correct from before. Um, but I think the website from here on out is going to be a lot more like a live website, more updated. And it's going to have a lot more information than it did before. So I was just doing an unboxing of our invertebrates. I wasn't going to film that much because they're invertebrates. I don't want every video to be an unboxing video because we had a lot of shipments. But I was going through it. So this one Eric placed. Eric placed this call. I knew we were getting like, like snails, hermits. Like that's what I told Eric to get. I'm going through the box. This is the reason I brought the camera out. Let's see. Where is it? It's a seahorse. There's three of them in here. So uh, if you want a seahorse, come stop by the stop shop. We have three of them. Uh, but yeah, I just whipped out the camera for that because that was just something I wasn't expecting. You know, I wasn't really gonna, I don't think unboxing hermit crabs and snails is all that exciting. But uh, 
Yeah, we got seahorses. That's kind of cool. So a lot of people ask us, you know, where we get our frags from. You know, if we, we cut them ourselves or we just buy a bunch of frags and resell them. Uh, so the answer is a, it's a little bit of both. Um, but for the most part, we do cut our own frags. We have our uh, bandsaw. We have two right now, the big ones, we gotta get a new blade for the, the large one. So I'm using the smaller ones. Like yeah, I don't have a big rock that I need a big saw to get through. Like it can perfectly fit through the little saw. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit how I do that. I'm gonna take some frags that we have and I'm gonna cut them up a little smaller so that we have a variety of sizes uh, so you guys can pick from. So that way you don't have to spend a bunch of money on a, a coral. You can get a, the same coral for a little, a little cheaper. So you can see I already started with the Ice Fire Monty. Uh, so I got two in the back that are half of the disc and then these are the quarter of a disc. So I'm gonna go, I think, with the Blue Polyp Undata and the Pepper Monty next. Uh, so I'll show you guys exactly what I did. If you're wondering what that buzzing sound in the background, we have an aerator going right now. Um, a client brought us in one of their really nice Naso Tangs. Um, Unfortunately, their tank was having a massive ick outbreak, so we said, yeah, bring it in. You know, our systems are run again, like so beautifully with copper and all the antibacterial, like it, the quarantine system, that it'll take care of it. So the ick looks like it's completely gone, but now she has like really bad scarring. Can't really see it in this video. Um, I'll show you when I put her back in the tank. So I have it in a Melifix dip right now. You know, there's no point in treating our entire systems because that's just a, a lot of Melifix it would take. So we just do these dips for about 15, 20 minutes. And I got the aerator going, make sure she has enough oxygen. Um, so yeah. So during this part, I'm just kind of doing a voiceover. Uh, I didn't really talk while I was recording this because you know I was focusing on making sure that my hands, you know, were in a good place and you know cutting the coral appropriately. Uh, so really, you can just see me going through. It's a Monty and Andata, so where I cut it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, just more about the sizes. Um, so yeah, you'll see in a second exactly what I finished up. So you can see now I have half of the Monty, and then it in quarters, and then half of the Andata, and then in quarters. The other piece is right there. Um, so now I'm going to glue them onto some discs. Glue them on some discs and then get them back into tanks. Everything's back in now, so we got. I gotta do a little rearranging now because there's not enough room for all the little frags. But you can see the basics. Uh, I got the the fulls in the back, the halves are here, some of the quarters, and then there's more quarters in the back. So I just gotta rearrange some stuff. But fragging really isn't something you should be afraid to do. You know, you should really try it. It's part of the hobby. You know, you should try new things. You know, just be careful. Take your time with it. You know, do your research on how to frag corals because each coral is different. Like you can't just take an A can and just go straight through it. Uh, you got to go around the heads. There's a lot of LPS. You got to go around the heads. Zoas, you can go around the heads. It's a lot harder. You kind of just go through the colony. SPS is a similar way. Um, but really take your time. Do your research with it. Um, but it's definitely something that every hobbyist should try at least once or a bunch of times because you can make some really good money off your tank and make your tank pay for itself. So you can see it's it's really bad on that side. Um, it oh man, I, I feel so bad for her. But you know, like I'm glad the ick's gone. Like you should have seen her the other day, absolutely coated in it. Um, came in not coated, then finally hit her. Oh my god, it's so bad. Um, but you know, it, it's gonna happen sometimes. Like I I've lost my tank to ick. It's, it's heartbreaking, absolutely just heartbreaking to just watch like animals that you like, you really care about, like you truly deeply care about, like you, do, you learn their personalities, you, like I just I just feel so bad, like I feel bad for this guy, like he lost basically his whole tank. Oh my, God, it's so bad. Um, I'm really hoping she makes it, but it, it's just such a bad gash. I put her in a less aggressive tank. Um, so hopefully she doesn't get picked on that much, but 
and it, it happens in the hobby like the fish come in with ick a lot and like you, you get in your tank and then it's kind of game over from there like you especially in a reef tank like you can't run copper in that um so he he was trying to catch as many fish as he can but he said he just had to sit there and just basically just watch his his tank just kind of disappear on him um so i'm hoping she does okay she's still eating which is good it's a good sign she still looks fat but just like it, it's very bad Yes, good job. Oh, that is that is great to see. Great to see. All right, hey guys, this is Eric, World of Reef. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick video here, talk to y'all about <clears throat> the nitrogen cycle. Um, we get asked, of course, all the time when you have new hobbyists coming in to get an aquarium. Um, and they want to understand why they can't have any animals in their aquarium for two to four weeks on average uh, for the cycling period well back uh, when this was early on in the hobby we used to do fish so we do damsels or clownfish or something like that to um, promote the cycle in the aquarium that's pretty mean so I don't promote doing that anymore now we just add raw ammonia until you get it to about 0.25 or an alert on a uh, Seachem uh, ammonia watcher. The little thing you stick on inside the aquarium, it'll give you a wheel and it'll color up in the center where you're at. So you'd want to, if you're using that, you would go to where you get an alert. That's how, when you know you've added enough ammonia. Then you dose bacteria every day, and, and nitrifying bacteria, which is an aerobic bacteria which uses oxygen. That gets you through the ammonia and nitrite, which is gonna get produced in a new aquarium. The ammonia is going to spike, the nitrite is going to spike. All of that is very toxic to the animals. So what we do is we dose bacteria every single day until that's alleviated, and what we end up with is nitrate. That's the final product. Well, not the final product, that's the second to last product really in the cycle. So this is how the cycle goes. Ammonia is produced through fish waste. Are you adding the ammonia to the tank? Nitrifying bacteria eats the ammonia, releases out nitrite. A second bacteria eats the nitrite, releases out nitrate. The nitrate is reduced through nitri denitrifying or anaerobic bacteria. That utilizes CO2, not oxygen. Oxygen kills this bacteria. So it takes much longer for this bacteria to grow in the aquarium. So a lot of times people will be plagued with high nitrates for quite a while until their aquarium is stabilized and established. There are other things you can do, of course, in that case to uh, help bring down nitrate and increase the growth, but we'll get to that in another video. Um, the final stage though is nitrogen gas. That is what the nitrate is turned into by the denitrifying bacteria. So there you go, that's the nitrogen cycle. You have ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and then nitrogen gas. And it, that's why it's important that the cycle has to be done with no ammonia or nitrate left in the system when you start putting animals in because it is very toxic to them and it will kill them. So that's why this hobby is all about patience. Next time guys, see ya. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's vlog. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, comment, rate, subscribe. Subscribe for 10% off in the store. Stay tuned in our website. I'm doing a lot of work on it. So for the most part, it's, all, it's almost there. It's almost there. I got a lot of changes done to it. Uh, so if you're not in the area, uh, you can start ordering from us online. All orders over $200 are free shipping, regardless. Free shipping over $200. Uh, so comment, rate, subscribe, uh, post notifications on, share it, do whatever. Uh, so yeah, see you guys.